How do we fix a wigwam? Why do we have to fix a wigwam? Do we even need to fix the wigwam? The wigwam here at the Appalachian Bushman School does require a little bit of maintenance since last year during its construction. Before I show you the maintenance, I actually want to show you how it was constructed. I've had a lot of questions, especially on my Instagram when I post this shelter. Or am I going to do a video on how it was made? How was it made? What's it set up like? Like what is going on with the wigwam? So let's take a quick overview of what the wigwam is all about. Then I'm going to show you how we're actually doing some maintenance on it. Easiest thing to do is some specs first. Diameter is 12 foot. So it was a 12 foot circle that we drew on the ground. Height is about six and a half feet. I can stand up and I still have a little bit of room above me in it. It is made from tulip poplar bark and you're gonna see that a little bit later in this video actually how we harvest that for this project. Very simple process. And then inside it's very easily constructed. This is the roof opening of the wigwam. There is an opening because we have a fire pit at the bottom, so it drafts really, really well out this opening. We have something then we can cover this over with if we're gonna stay in here and it's gonna rain. This wigwam required 16 poles, and what we did with the 16 poles was we evenly spaced them out throughout our circle, and then we dug holes down. We implanted the sticks or small saplings, which are birch in this case, around two foot down into the ground and packed them in, so we had all these sticks, 16 of them just sticking up in the air. We then folded them over and tied them off at the top. You can tell by looking here that these sticks were actually quite long. So when we folded them over, they almost went all the way across the entire dome shape. And then we just tied them out with straight lashes at a series of different points. And that's gonna give it a lot of stability. Once all of our poles were in place, we had that nice dome shape, but we needed something to hold that structurally in place. So we put three cross members. So these cross members again are just birch. You can see I'm pointing at them right here, here, and then one real close to the top. And that was just green saplings that we bent and lashed, bent and lashed, bent and lashed, and made sure that they fit around the entire wigwam itself. And that gave it a very, very stable area and platform for us to work with. Now I gotta admit, once we built the frame, everything came to a screeching halt. The frame was up for at least six months. We built that in the fall, and then we realized that to cut all this bark, it was gonna have to be done in the springtime when the sap was flowing and the bark was peeling very easily from trees. So that's what we did. It just sat and it was like, ah, nail biter. When are we gonna get to this? We just, we knew it was gonna be a big project, but we sort of held off until we just had the ambition to do it. After the frame was constructed, it was time to put on our outer shell. I did a little bit of research, and to be honest, a little bit is probably an understatement. I barely did any research on actual wigwams themselves. I looked a little bit online, but I sort of just went with my own flow and thought, well, this is what's gonna work best, this is what's gonna hold up best for us, and that's what we went with. So this doesn't have insulation built into it. I know some designs I've seen online had insulation built in. Ours is strictly just a frame and then tulip poplar bark placed on the outside. Now we did use synthetic cordage for this and we have used a lot of cordage for this. You're gonna see that here shortly when I replace one of the panels, how much cordage we would actually use. So we went out at this point then, we cut down some trees on my property, three total, and they were quite large tulip poplars, about 14 inches in diameter. We used everything, and of course we do harvest the wood, so we have a lot of that put back drying for different types of projects that we're going to do. Once we removed the bark, we started to place the panels on. After our panels were cut off the tulip poplar tree, we brought them back to the wigwam and began to place them. We started with the lowest row first, then this row, and then there's a third row up top. You can see how the panels overlap each other on the first row. Second row then overlaps to help shed water. So this is the basic construction. And just one more view you can see on the outside, you want them layered like this because the water, when it comes down, is gonna beat off like a shingle and it's not going to get on the inside of the wigwam. On the ground of the wigwam, when we placed our panels in place, we used pegs that we cut and hammered down into the ground. The reason you wanna do this is as the bark dries, it's going to curl back up. So it's going to open up and it's gonna to wanna to curl back into its natural shape. Specifically when it dries, it gets real curled. So what you wanna do is peg the outside and inside and that's going to hold them panels straight. And then we have tie out points that we punch with an awl put our cordage through and tie them panel to panel and that's also gonna help. You can still see that we get a little bit of bend 
here in each one of these panels, but that is gonna be something that you need to take into consideration ahead of time. The final issue with the Wigwam build was not until months later when the panels began to shrink and they shrunk a tremendous amount, much more than we even thought. What happened then was we had huge gaps between the panels and some of our tent pegs we didn't manage good enough, we didn't have them in deep enough, and the strength of the bark wanting to shrink and turn in pulled the pegs right out. So we had bark that just curled in on itself, shrunk a lot, and we had huge gaps. Now the gap is not, of course, this big. This is a panel I actually removed, and we shifted some of these panels over last week when we were starting to fix this up. This is the last panel that needs replaced. So we actually went back out, harvested another tulip poplar tree, and we replaced six panels. This will be the sixth panel we're replacing. Now when I say replace, it's not because the old ones rotted again, it's just because they shrunk, so we had to shift them over that much. So if you were going to undertake a process like this, what I can say is that if you're using tulip poplar bark on each side of each panel, at least six inches of overlap to be safe. And I would say, if you can, if you can go a little bit more, seven or eight inches on each side, do that. It's not gonna hurt it. It might just require you to fell one more tree. When it comes to the construction of the wigwam itself, you're gonna to have to choose the proper materials to have the proper outcome. What I can show you here, even though this is just replacing a panel, it's the same process that if you're going cutting new panels and building this from scratch. What I like to tell individuals to do with this is number one, decide how big you want your panels. And that is normally initially gonna be dictated on the diameter tree that you cut down. So if you're cutting down tulip poplars 12 inches in diameter, out to 14 inches, that circumference is gonna be good enough to open up and have a nice size panel. When replacing panels, you're of course gonna to want to take a piece of cordage and measure, again, with that nice big overlap, and then you can take that piece of cordage out into the field with you, and you know the diameter of your tree needs to be at least this big. That way you don't have to cut multiple sections. So I already harvested that tree, that's not too much of a problem. The only thing I need to take into consideration now is from ground level up, of course, now underneath these top roof panels. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna find the lowest point. I have a small dip in the ground right here. So I'm gonna take the lowest point of that dip and I'm going to pull my cordage from the ground up. Again, about six inches of overlap right here. All I'm gonna do then is use this as a tape measure. I'm gonna just tie a knot in this. Now I know, and I'll double check it one time, from the knot to the end of my cordage is the length of my panel. So we're gonna go again in that low section, look at the overlap, we're good. We have about six inches of overlap and I should be fine. We'll go out and actually cut the piece right now. We're at the site where the, we have felled a tree to uh, gather the bark. So I'm gonna go off of this edge. Again, I take my string and I'm gonna measure upward to where I need. And then wherever that mark is at, I can take my saw. Best tool for this, literally just one of these small hand saws. And I can begin to saw in and score this tree. So the reason a saw is that much easier is because this bark is tough to cut with a knife. And if you want a nice clean cut, an ax will work, but you usually have it pretty choppy. I'm not too worried about having this perfectly even all around. All that I'm trying to do is just saw into this till I get down into the wood itself, and then we're going to free this around. So if I have to roll this log a little bit, I will, which I'm gonna have to when I get the underside. Now that the bark has a score mark all the way around it, it is a single section. So to get that free of the tree, we're going to just take a knife put a slice down the length of it, and then we're gonna to start to peel away with our hands. One thing to remember with this is that it doesn't matter if it's a perfectly straight line or not. I usually just let the bark tell me where it wants to go, and I go with it. it makes it that much easier. It doesn't really matter when we open it up. We have overlap anyway. You're not gonna see that. Now this is one part of the process you wanna take your time with. I actually took a stick here, and I just, carved a little bit with my knife, just to have a point rather than digging my knife in. You can hear right now, it sounds almost like an orange peeling. And that's what we want. We want to make sure we can get in there. What you need to be careful with though, is if you just keep pushing in this direction, what's gonna happen is you're gonna split the bark out. So we need to try to get under this as soon as we can. 
in this direction and start to work it. The grain runs the way my finger's pointed, so if I would pull this, I'm gonna split that out. So I wanna get it and work it towards me or towards the camera. It's just like that. Hear that pop, that means it's free. Now, a couple options. We either are gonna have to rotate the tree itself, which I think I'm gonna have to do, and try to jimmy rig this out, or lift the tree. And this tree is just too big and heavy for me to lift, so let's roll this around and see what we can do. All right. So working with natural materials, sometimes stuff happens. That side got pinched and you could see it split the panel out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this panel, keep the next panel, and cut one more. Because of the dip in the ground here, I'm gonna use two pieces of poplar bark. I think it's gonna give it a tighter seal. The piece that we initially harvested had a small crack in it anyway, so I just went ahead, split that out, and I harvested a second piece about the same size. So I'm gonna patch this in with two pieces. Now, patching this in is a little bit different than if we were actually doing this bottom row, middle row, top row, because we don't have this here. But we do have this already in place, so all that I'm going to do is take my panel and slide it up underneath, just like that. Now I'm gonna take this bottom section, and if you could see this tent peg down in here that we created, I'm gonna slide this behind that. You could see now that this is nice and tight in here. It's fitted up underneath this top section. It's against this. We have a peg that we made holding that in the bottom very well and tight so it won't curl underneath. What I wanna do next now is take an awl. And an awl is super important with this project. It allows us to punch easily through these sheets of material. I will say this, that this is a triangle awl, so a three-sided awl compared to a round awl. Three-sided awl works way better on green material. It just drills a hole out rather than pushing a hole out. So I always like that. Either will work, so if you don't have a three-sided awl, don't worry about it, but um, if you can get one, all the better. So what I wanna do now is I'm going to lash this piece to this piece, just to hold that in place. I'll probably do that in two sections, and then we can move on to adding our last piece in place. Punch my first hole, and I'll just slide my cordage right through the hole and you can see I didn't get it all the way through. Clean that hole up a little bit. Give it one more shot. You want nice clean edges on your cordage. If they start to fray, it doesn't work too good. So put enough through, you can feel it. Now I'm gonna go to the next piece. Punch this through. So I'm using this almost as a drill. Now, lucky for me, I could just reach through and feel that they're both through, so that's a good thing. We're gonna come down a little bit lower and punch them, then I'll go inside and just knot those pieces off. I'm gonna place in my last panel. What I went ahead and did was the panel I just placed in on the end of that and the back side, so the inside of the wigwam, I placed a peg that's gonna hold that from curling in. Once I get the second panel, we'll put the outside pegs in place. Slide this up and in. Very simply like that. Behind 
that peg. What I can do right now where the two overlap, I have a tent peg in the back, so I'm gonna take another peg that I made, place it in here. You wanna get these as good and tight against there as possible. Hammer this in. And we're good. Now you can see that that's bulging out just a little bit as I push, so that's where the tie outs are gonna come into play. They're gonna help hold that down really well. And there you have it, replacing panels on your wigwam. That's the maintenance that we had to do in order to keep this shelter alive. And now it's as good as new. It's all sealed up again and ready to go. I gave you a quick rundown of actually how we constructed it, although you didn't see video on it. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's not a very hard process. A little bit labor intensive, more time intensive than anything. But if you want to, give it a shot, see how it is. If you do do one, hashtag me, Cold Cracker Bushcraft on Instagram. Show me a picture of it when you're all done because they're very unique shelter structures. So as always, this was Dan Walwack, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. And until the next video, stay in the woods.